Ah, uh, what a day, what a day, what a day. It's actually uh, summer here in South Africa, or just uh, going to be summer. And it's raining. It's raining for two days. That's the rainy season, the summer season, all of it's, You know, it's Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, the whole thing's changed. Yeah. Look, that's not what we're going to talk about. You know, we come to the end of the year, and it's the end of the year. What did I learn this year? <laughs> Cut it to a chase. And it's quite interesting. I learned a lot this year, I think. Wow, as always, you always learn a lot. But the thing is kind of, you know, the, I mean, it happened last year, the year before, but the late night, uh, well, I don't watch TV, so it doesn't affect me, but, you know, a lot of people get their news from these late night comedians who just do the, I want to say do the headlines, but there is such, you know, why? But is there a substance to it? What are you reading to find out the stuff? But nobody's doing that analysis. People are just going over whatever they're going over. But I wanted to get to something else, but let me get to something uh, uh, right now. Um, and you know, there's this whole thing about the, the sexual piccadillies or whatever it is, all that stuff that's happening, people getting busted uh, for stuff from 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 minutes ago, uh, whatever it is, and uh, it's not a good situation. But uh, a couple of things. In the 80s, I, I took up, I didn't take up, I, I learned a little bit about numerology. And one of the things I learned about numerology is that, you know, numbers have vibrations. But you know, basically, there's a male and female principle also. So uh, a, an odd number is a male kind of male principle number. An even number is a female principle number. Now, since we're coming into uh, the two, we, since I learned, I was dealing with this in the early, late 80s, early 90s. It helps me when you travel. It's like a, uh, um, uh, you know, like people say, well, what's your sign? Something like that. It's like that kind of parlor games kind of thing. So it was just fun to, to, to do shortcuts with people's uh, numbers, numerology. Anyway, I'm coming to this particular point. Uh, so what happens, uh, uh, the, 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 like we're in the 2000s, so that's a female number. Now before that we had like, uh, what is it, 19, uh, like 1996, whatever it is. So it was uh, one, uh, nine and one is 10, so that's a male kind of number. Right before that you had the 1800s, so uh, eight and one is nine, that's also, so also a male number. So you had two, basically two centuries that were male dominated. Then when you get to 2000s, that's like a female principle is taking over. Okay, what does it have to do with anything, Brother Sloan? Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, so, so for 200 years, you had basically the male dominant principle is the, is the thing. But now, right when the, right when I, we had, I had these discussions too, when, when the 2000s hit, then it's females sort of taking up. So now you see a lot of females in charge and a lot of female principles guiding things. So it's not a surprise to me that, you know, uh, all these things come back home to roost where, where females are taking more power, uh, people are getting busted for doing, you know, basically, I was, I was to say anti-female things or, you know, being, being bullies or whatever it is. Okay. So, so that's one thing. Let's set that aside for, you know, for, for a bit. Uh, the other thing that's quite interesting to me is that people keep on looking at these surface things. They don't look at the underlying, the underlying, the, the, that girders everything, uh, for instance. Um, right now, we have a, we have a situation uh, where, uh, if you know, say the internet, you know, the internet is what undergirds, you know, say emails and stuff like that. So, so you can talk about the emails, or you can talk about uh, Yahoo, or, or you can talk about, um, uh, you know, any, um, I'm sorry, talk about, you, you can talk about, uh, say, um, um, what I've been thinking about, you know, you know, say, well, you know, Gmail, Yahoo, uh, 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 Google, you know, uh, Facebook, all those are based on the internet. Okay, so uh, so that's one thing. Then the other thing that we have is that uh, what else is based on something that's you know sort so of different, the, the basis of things. So the blockchain, for instance, is the basis of certain things. So, so like cryptocurrency. So people went to cryptocurrency, but I'm not interested in cryptocurrency. I'm interested in the blockchain. It's like I'm not particularly interested in the Instagram or whatever have you. I'm interested in the internet. You know, that's the thing that underlies everything. You know, so while people are chasing money or whatever they're trying to do, I'm looking at what is, does this system, how is this system going to affect the future? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So, so that's all sort of, you know, what, what, what I get at. So I think that people are missing the point when they're trying to um, be millionaires or trillionaires with Bitcoin or whatever they're, they're trying to do. I think what you should look look at is see how the blockchain is going to change your life, going to alter, going to you know undergird your your, your life. That's the thing. Um, now the biggest point though, going to the sexual kind of things, uh, there's a thing uh, to be accused of something. It's like really really bad. Listen, 
don't get me wrong. If more, if more than two or three, more than five people come and say, you did this, then that's got to be a signal to something. You know, it's got to be a signal to something. You know, this, uh, this things are not right. But let me give you, a, 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 let me give you two stories. One, uh, um, in New York, uh, well, my best friend was married, but he was a cop, he was married to a cop. But she was in charge of the sexual kind of, not charge, but she's part of the sexual kind of unit, you know, when women get raped, whatever, chance of counsel, whatever, have it. Now, this is back in, um, in, the, in, in the 90s, 2000s, in the 90s. And the, and the most famous case, I guess, let me go back, I think this happened in the 80s, we you know with Sharpton and then with, with Tawana Brawley or whatever have you, what, what, what came out, people didn't really notice, is that she had accused some cops of somebody of doing something, whatever it is, but as it turned out, her father was so strict, she didn't want him to know, remember she's a teenager, she didn't want him to know that um, that she was just out, at whatever it was, and so she made up, basically made up a story that she got this and got people smeared something on it, whatever it is. It was the same thing back, that, back then, if you were like 17, a, a, young, a younger girl, I'm not putting this on, every, on everybody, but there are cases, a, a, a larger percentage of people realize that uh, when they get, when, 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 a, when a teenager gets busted, or the parents say, what happened? They said, oh no, he was, he was with another teenager. Oh, he raped me. You know, and that puts the onus off and then they're accused and then it gets kind of, kind of strange from there. So to get to the bottom of it, even if you're cleared, your name has already been out there and whatever it is, you, you get what I'm saying. So there are cases like that. I'm not saying that these cases, uh, you know, with these, you know, these Harvey Weinsteins or these whatever, they're Russell Simmons or whatever it is, uh, it's not true, but that's, that's one thing. Also, yes, it, there's no way you get around it. If you're a boss, if you're, if there's just some money involved in terms of you're, 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 you're paying somebody or they're depending upon your good, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, recommendations for advancement, that's a no-no. You just don't do it in the workplace. I was in the military, and I'm gonna tell you, you cannot, there's no fraternization in the military. In other words, you can't be boinking your, your superior. Say your superior is a first lieutenant or a captain or whatever have you, and you're, you're a sergeant in the mail or an uh, airman. You can't, be, no, that's, that's not allowed. You're, psh, it's not allowed, you know. No, airman. And even your supervisor, you know, if you're, if you're NCOIC, you know, if you're, you know, the, the, say your staff sergeant is in charge of some troops. Well, again, there's a, there's a hierarchy, you know, and you can't, you can't abuse that hierarchy. And I just know, I think people are just basically lazy. Why? Look, many people date in their workplace, all right? But the supervisory thing is kind of, kind of strange. Well, that's lazy, you know? You, if, find somebody else in another field. Go, you know, you know, pick up somebody in the library with a poetry reading or something like that. Why you gotta go to a bar, with it? well, in a bar, I don't care. But if you're in the workplace, that's just means you're lazy. This person every day, you're close to them, you know, that's just the case. I mean, even somebody pointed out all this stuff, even, even Barack, even Michelle Obama was at, at one point Barack Obama's boss, and they dated, you see? But, uh, okay, so we have that, that problem. But let me tell you a personal thing that's kind of interesting. It has nothing to do with this sexual thing. I used to go to Montreal, Canada. Uh, I lived in New York. I used to go to Montreal, Canada every winter, like about December. I was doing a lot of writing then, a lot of playwriting, a lot of writing, a lot of, you know, like that. And so I would take the train up. You know, when I get to I get to Montreal, I get to a guest house, send it in, whatever, and um, you know, I start. I had to typewriter and start typing. This is back with typewriters. You know, computers were just coming in, and you know, you would look out the window, whatever. You look out the window, and the snow would be like here, and then like an hour later, the snow would be there, like that. It was great. So I just really liked that atmosphere, and with solitary, you know, it was quiet, whatever. So so I would do that. But one time I was coming through. Um, you know, across across the border, and I was having a conversation in the, in a train car with a bunch of nice, nice, nice folks, white folks. You know, we just having a nice conversation. You know, da -da 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 -da. And, you know, I was a pretty all right guy. You know, back then, good looking, whatever have you. And I had locks. You know, and so you know, we were having a good time. I'm joking, blah blah blah. We get to the border, and the guy's checking the passport. He takes my daddy. This guy comes back, and he says, "Hey, Stuckerson, have you ever been arrested?" No, I haven't been arrested. I, I, have you ever been, this car, have you been, what, I said, no, I haven't been arrested. He said, are you sure? No, I said, no, I'm sorry, I haven't been arrested. I'm going to give you one more chance to tell me, da, 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 da. I said, I don't know what you're talking about like that. So this went on back and forth. Now, we're at the border. I didn't really care. I don't have a lot of money. I still don't have a lot of money, you know, so I can't afford to be staying someplace, you know, across the border, having, you know, and then next day, I just, it's not in my budget. And this went on, da, da, da. And it's funny, I, I said something, well, look, okay, I guess I'll be the rich if that's what you say. And then he came back and said, I saw him on the, and he gave me my passport back. Now, 
through all this stuff, I'm not getting the whole story straight, but you know, it's, that's basically what I went through. After we went through, those same people I was talking, talking to because, we, because the guy was loud and we had all this stuff, they treated me like I was a criminal. Now, I'm innocent, but in the court of public opinion, and because this guy accused me, his border guard, whatever you call these people, customs, whatever it is, you know, accused me, then they, the conversation all changed. You could see them physically just, just didn't want to deal with me. And I was like, wow, this is strange. So we have to really be careful with the court of public opinion, even if somebody is, is, is finally found innocent. Even if, look, I'm not talking about technicalities, you know. If you notice, this, this was bogus, and there's also a lot of cases, especially in Hollywood, you know, where people are gaming the systems and stuff like that. You can just research yourself and find out all of this stuff. So what am I saying? What did I learn this year? I learned, wow, how news we do. People are not digging for the news. People are lazy. That's what I learned this year. People are not digging under the headlines, beyond the headlines to find out. Well, this whole Russia thing that's happening, it's kind of strange. You know, it's easy to find out what's going on. And the people are not listening. They see what they want to see. They want to accuse. They want to, when they take that first position of finding out the information, they want to be right so they can't backtrack. And say, oh, you know, I was wrong about that. They don't want to do that. So, sorry to be so, no, I'm not sorry to be so long. This just took a little a little a little doing because I really had to get this off my head because it just seems like I, I think I'm gonna sort of bury myself for the next few weeks even this holiday season just get into my work because this out here is just really insane these accusations back and forth and people this is guilty that's guilty and uh, it's just not good it's not a great society right? and to me it's just a distraction because as they do that kind of stuff all kinds of really serious stuff is happening happening someplace let me say one 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 last thing and this whole, they call it PC culture, this snowflake thing, whatever, it's getting really getting out of hand. I was listening to something, uh, uh, the, the, the Richie Allen show from, from, from UK, and he was talking about there was a case in the UK where it was snow, it was snowing. And so somebody just, you know, wrote, wrote a song, I'm dreaming of a white campus, meaning the snow, you know, a white campus. I'm dreaming of a white campus, off the white Christmas thing. And somebody said, that's racist, or whatever they said, and the camp, the, the school had to apologize for for that thing. And people say, "Wait a second, I'm going like, e wait a second, D don't people don't know? Huh? How is that possible? So you can't say I'm dreaming of a white campus in England because that might offend somebody who doesn't know the song White Christmas, knows the parody of that, and just having fun. This is not a festive season anymore, is what I'm trying to say. Now everybody's on guard for everything. Forget, hey, Christmas party, don't go to your Christmas party. If you have Christmas party, don't go. Don't go. You got this thing with this, people really being divided, the genders are really being divided. And, 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 and if you challenge folks, they've taken their position and they no longer are listening to you or listening to logic. They are just, I'm gonna take my and I'm right. I'm right, and I got social justice on my side. And oh, it's terrible. That's just a little opinion for me. T from the Pattersons, taking a chance to bet, letting you know what I only suspect.